Hello everyone, it's your boy Arm, and today, since I'm on a hell of a boss, you know, roll right now, uh, one question I did actually have, and actually I was talking in the comments section with, well, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, so I'm going to call you Vinicus, sir. So, I was hearing from Vinicus here, he was talking about how it seemed like Moxie kind of went incompetent, it seems like, through the episode, because we were talking about, you know, how seemed like Moxie was actually doing okay for once in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then Vinicus points out that, you know, if he had a gun, this whole interaction would have ended a lot quicker. And then Shrekion over here says the whole thing would have ended in six minutes if it wasn't, if they just brought a gun. And I'm assuming that's just because at the beginning, if he brought a gun, and then Millie said, Oh, look, honey, it's that guy right there. Moxie could have just pulled out a sniper rifle and popped a cap in his ass. So, you know, that's one way to do it. So, And then the whole episode would just be bullets kind of stalking, you know, <laughs> Barbie wire. So I think this is a very interesting take, I think. So looking at it, I'm wondering, why did Moxie not kill the Kynes Counselor outright, right away. Now, I think there might be a multitude of reasons. The real reason might just be because because they needed a Millie episode, hence they needed to have this scenario, which wouldn't make much sense because it could seem like you're kind of compromised Moxie as a character. Because Vinicus points out, is it seems like he goes incompetent this episode and kind of is different. Now... It, to order to see, uh, I was wondering if it's possible if Moxie would actually legitimately do this for a reason, or if this is extremely out of character for him. I think it's possible that this is definitely in character for him, because I th I'm thinking of it as a multitude of reasons. The main one to me is, well, besides his psychology, if we look into his family, seeing how, well... His dad never really loved him, it seems like, with, you know, Crimson. Yeah, he's pretty cold and hard, uh, cruel, and honestly not sure what exactly happened to his mom, but whatever happened to her most likely didn't actually help Moxie either with her disappearing and everything. So I'm thinking that a combination of them factors probably made it where he didn't get much attention as a child, so when Chaswick came along and actually gave him attention, he actually did, seems like he thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm also thinking the fact of it could be possible he likes attention. And also another thing, too, I would also bring up, too, might be the fact that he is a guy who actually wanted to be an actor, a star, you know, a singer and everything, it looks like. So it wouldn't be out of the realm that he really wanted to, like, not only prove the blitz that he can do the mission, but he's really good at, you know, putting on a persona sleuthing for information and going through the whole nines and because moxie over here he's a very calculated you would say he makes these big elaborate plans even if it doesn't work out all the time he usually has a plan now he continues with his plan because i think it's due to the fact that he wants to please blitz now i'm thinking if we look back at episode i think it was six truth seekers in season one the main part i want to point out and piece of evidence i think is the reasoning why moxie did not shoot the guidance counselor outright has to do with the fact that as i will show you the clip right here it happens after blitz and moxie go through the acid trip basically and they basically start to chat with each other now i will play the clip do you remember what you said to me after my first day with the company? Not really. I remember. You told me I did a good job and that you were proud to work with me. I feel like you wanted to say something more judgmental, but you said that because I needed it. And it helped. Look, I'm hard on you because I know what you're capable of, Mox. You care too much about what everyone thinks, except for me, because, you know, my opinion is correct. But just keep doing a good job. Okay? You shoot and kill good, you escape things easy, you can be strategic and cold-blooded when you need to, and don't expect any more compliments, I'm maxed out. Thank you, sir. Now that you heard it, now the one thing I want to talk about is since Blitz complimented Moxie, he said he does good in that regard, which is very high praise, seeing that Blitz is usually not a guy who gives out compliments. He's usually insulting people. So if you get a compliment, that's usually a good thing. Now, since Moxie has this comment, I think he wants to try living up to his expectations that 
Blitz has on him, and he wants to impress Blitz as well. And I think it has to do with the fact that this comment was said, so I'm wondering if that resonated in him. Hence, when Blitz said, you're in charge of the mission, he kind of like, ooh, I can prove myself yet again. You know, like, I, I can prove to him I'm better than what he thinks I am. You know, I am vastly superior. So I think this episode, specifically that part, is vital to why I think Moxie is not incompetent in the latest episode. I do not think he is incompetent in unhappy campers. If you combine that with the fact that you know, he does not usually want to shoot innocent people, and usually is a bit hesitant. In this case, he wants to wait and see if this guy is truly suspicious, then carry out the actions. And on top of that, he doesn't want to kill the wrong guy, because if he goes guns blazing and kill him, then he feels like that, well, maybe I'm not going to live up to what Blitz thinks I can do overall. So, guys, what else do you think, guys? Do you disagree? Do you agree with me? And, you know, besides that, guys, like and subscribe if you're new. Helps me out. And, you know what, guys? As always, stay awesome, people.